All right, folks, we are headed back to the house. Uh, picked Amy up from work, and uh, we did the Waffle House thing. No, we didn't. We, we did, did the, the IHOP thing. We did the IHOP thing. We don't... Yeah, that's what we did. We just happen to have waffles. That's who you did. I did. And so, I uh, wanted to talk to Amy a little bit about her perspective on tonight's major topic of, of the show. I know she got to listen to me talk for a long, long time. Um, I want you to look at it from a law enforcement uh, perspective. And one of the things that I brought up was the fact that they're showing everything live on TV and as they were closing in upon the, the one person, uh, doesn't that seem like that's a little bit of a stretch? That's, a, that's dangerous is what it is. When Because everything that everybody else sees, the perpetrator can see as well. And so every step that the law enforcement's making, that perp knows what they're doing. And so there's no element of surprise. And that puts them in a very vulnerable situation. Uh, law enforcement, that's dangerous for law enforcement, for media to do that. Now, of course, with what we've seen throughout the night, we don't know for sure that they were actually um, getting, that he was actually inside that house at that point in time, because we just continued to get different story after different story. What is it that you think, not necessarily from a law enforcement aspect, but just in general, about how these stories, when they break, and the story changes and changes and changes, and of course it is because it's all happening live. They've not had any time to prepare in advance and things like that. But um, just speak on that for a second. Well, I think it's it's confusing to the public because so many stories get told and so many things get spread. That it's hard to ever. It's on part two now. I was in the midst of asking Amy about uh, all of the confusion, and she was telling uh, her, us about how she feels about that. And we'll let that go back and um, try that again. Well, I think it, it, it confuses the public as to what the actual facts are of a situation when you get so many different stories from so many different reporters and medias, it's hard to, to actually know what what the facts truly are and what actually happened because there's so many people that speculate um, and, and put their opinions in as opposed to put the facts in. So I think it's, I think it's really confusing and I think it's a shame that things can't be reported on a little bit more accurately. Well, when when everybody is at a rush to get the story first, it's kind of difficult for that to happen. And would, wouldn't you rather see them get the story right than to worry about who gets it first? Oh, absolutely. I would rather have accuracy any time because you, that's when you, you know for sure what's going on. That's when you're completely informed is when you're more accurate and when you're more informed as opposed to a lot of speculation and first, you know, first reports of everything are very seldom ever accurate. And it kind of shows how law enforcement must have a hard time with uh, when they do uh, interrogations and interviews and things like that because Obviously, the news people don't get it right right on the spot, and so eyewitnesses many times will get it wrong. And that's very true. It also, I mean, even when you look down the road, um, how bad it affects things, because when these people, whoever the perpetrators are, are convicted or go to trial, it's hard to find a jury that hasn't heard 42 different stories and, and you know, 40 of them being wrong. Well... Let's talk for a second about the terrorism aspect. Uh, <laughs> I hardly know what to ask other than to say, uh, are you surprised? 
Oh, no, not at all. Good grief. With, with the president we have, absolutely not at all surprised that we do not have a clue the ethnicity of, of the perpetrators, you know, where they're from, who they are. I mean, it doesn't surprise me at all that that's not told. Well, and those are the kind of things that they could tell and get correct real quick. It's not hard to look at somebody and say, uh, well, this person is a white male. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that's not rocket science at all. I mean, you don't have to be a deputy coroner or a coroner or, you know, a brain surgeon or even an Indian chief to figure that out. And it, it's not real difficult to look at a dead guy or a dead woman and say, well, they're from Middle Eastern descent. No, nope, not difficult at all. Now, that doesn't mean that because they're of Middle Eastern descent that they are necessarily Muslim. That That's not the case. Uh, not everybody that comes from the Middle East are Muslim, but uh, dang, they, <laughs> they, the thing that they could have gotten right, right off the bat, and they just... There's no way at that second press conference that that, sh that that chief of police didn't know the answers to that. I, I agree. I mean, they did get one thing right. There was a female. They got that right. We hope. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well, we've had a, a long day. We have... Uh, been on the road some today. You worked a full eight-hour shift today, and we're on the way home tonight. And it doesn't take us long to to get home. So I've had a long uh, day with reporting and and doing the things that we do here on Spreaker. And so we wanted to actually test and get Amy on here uh, with her opinion. Uh, but we actually we went live with breaking news we actually had a, a normal I say normal a regular podcast it wasn't really much of the normal sense and then we um, are using our mobile app and you know this is like on the road with Amy Boston <laughs> and her opinions on this I San think we Bernard. have a new segment on the road with Amy Boston on the road with Amy Boston and her opinions should should we um, we get the um, Willie Nelson on the road again? Oh uh, no, big uh, fat negative. Oh, but no. but Amy. No, no, no. Did I say no? No. I knew the answer to that. Oh my goodness, no. <laughs> don't don't you love it when I ask you the questions that I know what the answer is going to be, especially when it's no, no, no. No, you don't like when I do that, or no, there's still no to the... Yes, yeah, still no. Okay. Well, wow, and, and so... I can't believe you said that. I, I couldn't resist. I know you couldn't. Wow. I just have this instigator part in my body that just scratches and claws to get out, and... Well, I'm clubbing it in the head. Oh. <clears throat> you wait till Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> You wait to see what you unwrap for Christmas. A big club? Yeah, there you go. I saw a big club today. Yes, we did. <laughs> that was a big honking club. It was a big honking club. I think Alley Oop had been there. I think so. <laughs> it was a big hammer. <laughs> well, folks, uh, we are pulling up into our apartment complex, and um, we, we've lightheartedly it a little bit here at the end, but... Uh, it certainly has been a serious day today. Um, we don't know all the facts still yet and probably won't know all the facts for several days. And, and that's one of the, the really sad things about the news coverage is that if it takes several days to find out the truth, then I wish they would just report on what they know. What the facts just and the facts. That sounds like it ought to be a line in a television show. It does, doesn't it? Just, Just the, the facts, facts ma'am. Ma <gasps>
We said that at the same time. We did. You gotta owe me something now, right? Yeah, I owe you something. <laughs> All right, folks, go out and do the right thing, and God bless you. And who knows when you'll hear from us again? Lots of things going on. God bless.